This is the collector on the corner. The very first video we made and posted on YouTube, my grandson did it with his camera. And it was of me making two cedar posts with a with a lumbar and a home light chainsaw. And I touched on that we don't dig post holes in the Ozarks. We mainly drive them. We rarely, rarely, rarely dig a post hole. And a lot of people, I don't know, they may not have understood just what I was talking about and didn't realize why we don't do that, but why we don't dig post holes. And mainly because driving them is the most efficient way we know to do it, and it's the cheapest way. So I thought I'd just do a video and show you all the procedures on driving a fence post and some of the odds and ends, and I got all kinds of props here today. So I'll just get at you. First off, I'll talk about that ball. When you get about the right distance from the tailgate of my truck, I'm going to jab that bar into the ground. You can hear it hitting rocks already. I can. What we do when we hit them rocks? We beat on that thing a little bit. All righty. You don't got to have an antique sledgehammer like I used to do that, but it don't hurt nothing. Okay. I take it it's going to be a short fence. <laughs> No. I'm joking, Jeepers. <laughs> There's a rock down there somewhere. I've got that deep enough suit me. All righty. Pour a little water in there. Pour a lot of water. Next time we throw that post in that hole. Hey, you didn't splash me this time. You're sweet. <laughs> uh oh, I'm backing up. What I'm fixing to do is use what we call a post mall. This in here is kind of damaged. They're made, of, you should never beat on steel with these. Somebody <laughs> beat on steel and chipped this off. That was long before I ever got it. It's uh -huh. just concaved out there. Yeah, I see. That, I also I'll use this flat side. Uh huh. That's a 14 pound head on that. Uh -huh. Back in my younger days, <laughs> I used this one. It's 16 pound. Uh -huh. But that's for that's for somebody who's 20, 30 years younger. Young whippersnapper. <laughs> it about spilled your tea, darling. No, oh boy. Start that with a couple of licks. I see it. Whoa. Whoa. That's pretty good. Whoa. <laughs> now that's in the ground. Mm -hmm. There's no cow, goat, or horse going to push that over. No pig's going to get down there on the whole mark bottom, root it up. A man with a chainsaw might cut it down. Okay, that's how we drive them. Uh huh. A steel post. I've seen people stand that steel post up. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll get their driver. Uh huh. And they'll do this and try to put it over the top. I guess you're supposed to lay it down. Yeah. Put your driver on. <laughs> okay, this driver here. Yeah. It's pretty light. Uh -huh. I don't like it. It's a little bit light. Uh -huh. It's fine. Uh huh. This in here. That one's a big one. If you notice the handles is angled more. Uh huh. That way, if you're driving next to a fence. Mm -hmm. Your fingers is further away from that fence. Mm -hmm. And this in here has got a little more heft to it. I just like what I said not to do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, 
Uh -huh. I'm gonna pull that up so I'm not gonna drive that on down. Uh-huh. Now if you happen to run into that thing don't wanna move. Uh-huh. If I run into that, I take this old driver. I don't know what who made this or what it's good for, but mm -hmm. I can lay that on her. It's got that cap on. Uh-huh. I can beat on that end cap with a sledgehammer. Not my pole small, but that sledgehammer. Okie dokie. If I need to. Uh-huh. Okay. Say you wanted to drive one of these old flying folks. Mm-hmm. They ain't none of them drivers gonna fit over that. No, they're not. No. But I was at an auction. And there was this post driver guy. And I seen it. And I got a bunch of signed posts. I bought a, I don't know, about a hundred of them at auction. Some wow. brand new, never been brand new. Wow. So you get and your somebody new... come up with this old driver. <laughs> I don't know if it's a factory or if somebody made it or what. <laughs> but what's wrong with it? The you handles too... are straight out and too short. They should too be out tiny, here. Yeah. And an angle long enough that you can adjust how you're gonna hang on to it. Uh-huh. But what it does do. What does it do, Randy? It fits over that. Oh, cool. Now, I still can't do nothing here because it's too tall. I see that. But if I can get up in the bed of this truck without falling out. <laughs> that would be nice. Don't fall. So I could drive that. Mm -hmm. It's bouncing on something down there. I really need to... Probably Make that rock. rock. Yeah, right. probably that rock. There it goes. Yay! Okay, say you wanted to put a big old piece of pipe like this in the ground. Randy, I want to put a big old piece of pipe like that in the ground. <laughs> satellite dish on top of it. Yeah, he did. Like a gazebo. <laughs> and it rushed it off right quick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you see how that goes? Yeah, I see. Okay. That. Pretty cool. I was at auction. And this old boy who works at the auctioneer, his name's Corey, a friend of mine. They held that up and everybody laughed at that big old monstrosity there. Uh-huh. And I ain't a real big guy. Corey, he's a great big guy. And they said, who would use that? And Corey said, Mr. Watts could use it. <laughs> so they started at $5 and I bid $7.50 and bought it. <laughs> and I think it was well worth my $7.50 because I've used it quite a bit. So if you're gonna go buy a post driver, yes, and you're gonna be driving steel posts, okay, yeah, I recommend you get one like that right there. Mm -hmm. I've had several different ones. Daddy used to make homemade ones, mm -hmm. and that in there, right there, by far, I don't know what brand it is or anything. Don't really remember where it come from, but that's the best one I've had. This one's just a little bit too light, a little bit too short. That's too long and ungainly. Don't like it at all. <laughs> so if you're gonna drive a post, steel post with a driver, get that. Mm -hmm. If you're young and stout, <laughs> get you a 16 pound post. It, it mall. fell on the ground, darling. Yeah, get you a 16 pounder. I used to use 16 pounder when I was a young fella. But anyway, then you made the boys start using it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, my sons used it some. That one son had didn't have good aim, and he could break the handles out <laughs> faster than you could put them in. He'd over, he'd just hit the top of the post with the mall. He hit the mall bill on that side. He just break handles. Same way of splitting the axe or anything. He broke the handles out of everything. He had a poor aim. But anyway. That little 14 pounder will do it. It just takes a few more licks to do it. Okay, now we're going to talk about 
digging post holes. <laughs> we do dig some hot poles. A lot of times for a corner post or a, a brace post or something, we'll want to dig a hole and put a substantial post in there. Mm-hmm. Most people go and buy them a pair of post holes, diggers similar to this. Mm-hmm. You start digging a hole for that. Mm-hmm. You're going to get that dirt up. If you mm -hmm. slam that together, you bang your fingers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I bought these at auction many decades ago. Then found one of Arkansas rocks. Yeah, see? I think you did find an Arkansas rock. But anyway, you look there, see? How I don't bang my fingers together with them? Yep, I see it. This thing tends to dig a square hole, though. Mm -hmm. The hole's more square than it is round. So if you want to round that hole out, mm -hmm. you can just get one of the shovels like this <laughs> and round it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, you dig so deep with post hole diggers, mm -hmm. you can't get your dirt back up out of the hole. Yep. So what you can do then is take one of these augers, and you can auger your hole. Oh, wow. And that'll bring the dirt up out of the bottom of that hole. You can loosen it up with your post hole diggers, your bar, mm -hmm. and you use that auger. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm talking about, here's another pipe post that, Mm -hmm. You could drive with one of these smaller drivers. Mm -hmm. It's like you use for chain link fence and stuff. I've got yep. a whole lot of that I need to put up. Yep. Now I'm going to talk about the bar bar, stretching the water, <laughs> such as that. If I can find my bar out here. <laughs> They fasten their wire together, they'll do something of this nature. Mm -hmm. Loop it, this, that. When you go to stretch, and if you really put stretch on it, this is going to flatten out. Mm -hmm. It might not flatten out when you first stretch it, but eventually over time, it's going to flatten out. Mm -hmm. So, what I like to do. What do you like to do? I'll cut that wire off. Right here. And I'll untwist that. Mm -hmm. I got gloves there, but I, I ain't gonna bother putting one right now for one deal. And I'll untwist that and do the same thing. Bend it out like that. I'll stick them to get two together, just like that. Take a pair of vice grips. I have just these vice grips right now. Put that vice grip on there. Start going each way with your wire. See how I'm doing that? You go each way with your wires. I'm going to have to stop wiggling around. And them other two ends go uh -huh. the opposite direction. Yeah. That's When you get done, you wind up with something like this. That's never going to slip still. or get cool. looser. That's tight. Yep. It's going to stay that way. Yep. Yep. Okay. A lot of us will want to nail to a tree. If there's a tree in line with that fence or pretty close, if it's not right on a proper line, it don't matter. We'll want to nail that tree. But the thing about it is, 
you stretch water tight to that tree, the wind blows that tree and it goes back and forth. That tree's going to grow some over time and that. So what I like to do, old hood springs. Mm -hmm. I save all old hood springs off of junk cars. And I'll take and put my wire on there on this end, put a piece of wire on the other side, wrap it real good and tight, and then I'll stretch that tree. So with that tree, and I'll pull this spring apart just a little bit when I stretch it. You know, get a, oh, a pretty good gap, quarter inch in between them deals. That spring's got pulling on it. Well, that wire's going to stay tight. But if you run a tree into your fence line, this wire, instead of taking and pounding your staple all the way down, you get you a good long staple like that for in the tree. Don't use them. Don't use your short staples. Mm -hmm. Don't use these little shorties. Get a big long one. Mm -hmm. All the feed shorts got different sizes of them. You drive that down in there. You don't drive it tight. You leave it loose where that wire can do that. Oh, okay. As that tree sways, it ain't going to come out because it's a big, long staple. Mm -hmm. Now, say you want to pull a staple out. Mm -hmm. well, we I want to pull a staple out. Well, you, different <laughs> times you drove it in the wrong place or whatever. <laughs> you want, what we use here in the hills, they come out of the bottom grounds, what we call a cotton picker spindle. Don't try to hold that in your hand. Dang, that sucker is long. Yeah. <laughs> I got it loose enough I can get this under it now. Huh? Pull All it out. righty. I can pull it out. Now, to stretch your water, what I like to use... Is the tractor. I've got this come along. Ah. I've had it years and it's been used a lot, but it's got little deals on it. It's got this cable. I wrap this cable around wherever I'm going to attach it to a tree or my truck or whatever I got up there to stretch to. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm going to put the wire on it, I hook it on this little apparatus right here. It's like one of the Chinese finger traps. The more you pull on it, the tighter it gets. Ah. It tightens up on that wire. It's, but see, it's got a cam in there. Oh, it tightens cool. up on that wire real good and tight and holds it. Now, if you don't happen to have one of them, <laughs> what you can do, what you can, can get I you <laughs> a wire and you can get your pair of ice grips. Uh-huh. Tighten them all the way up. Mm -hmm. You can put your bias grip on there. Mm -hmm. Put your chain on there, just like that. All righty. You're going to have to hold still. Ah! Just like that. Okay. And that'll help stretch your wire. All righty. Another thing I found that you can use instead of hood springs, you can find them. I don't know where these come from, but I found these springs with these double deals in them. I, I, I think it was for high tension lines or something, but I, I bought a big pile of them at auction. I use a lot of them sometimes, too. The second thing you can do, you can stretch your wire with a hammer. Yep, I've done it that way. Yeah, we've stretched it with a hammer. This kind of hammer sometimes works better than curved saw. Or you can use a big crowbar. And when you go to nail to a tree... Especially if it's an old oak or something got a lot of bark on it. Get you one of these little hatches like this. And you can skin that bark off. Uh, uh, and yep. then you ain't got to switch hammers to drive your staple. You got uh, this good hammer head right here to drive your staples in. All right. So that'll work for that part of it. And I'm trying to think of there's anything else I was going to say. It's, yeah, if you got a hatchet like this, you can use that instead of one like I got. But it ain't as good for pounding staples, that one with the regular hammerhead on it. Mm -hmm. And 
These little nail aprons is awful handy to carry your staples in. You can put a different size staple in each pocket. And or your you can put sandwich your, and your or you chocolate. Or you can put your uh, <laughs> wire ties if you're tying wire to deal. Okay, now say you're stretching wire. If you're going to stretch the bottom of wire, what I do, I start with that bottom heavy strand first, down low. Mm -hmm. I'll stretch it. And I stretch one strand at a time till I get all the way top. Mm -hmm. If you start top, by the time you get to the bottom, you'll loosen that. Ah. But you won't. Okay, say you're going to put you a brace post. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will go to put a post in the ground. Mm -hmm. They'll stick it right in the center of that hole. Right. You don't want to do that. Why not? Well, I'm going to explain. You put it way over here. Say the wire is going to be pulling this direction. Mm -hmm. You put it way over here. Uh -huh. And you put it down there, and you start tamping stuff in the bottom of that hole. And here's a tamper that's just made out of a piece of pipe with a square piece on it. And you start tamping at the bottom, and you work it all the way up. Well, it's got the natural ground that ain't been disturbed to push against. Mm -hmm. If you try to tamp all the way around it, this ground on this side, dirt mm -hmm. you tamped in, it's going to squeeze out. Ah. But if you do that. If you can get some good-sized rocks and put them at the very bottom, Yep. That leverage is going to be working for you. And I use this old tamper a lot. That's a factory one. It's an antique. Mm -hmm. I don't know, probably as old as I am. I don't even know who made that thing. It's got a name off. I can't read it. But anyway, something and something and sons. <laughs> but uh, that's a pretty good old tamper. Needs mm -hmm. a, the handle top of it broke off. But that helps your brace post. Mm -hmm. That keeps your post from doing this. And I guess I about covered everything, except if you want to, and if you ain't got access to cotton pick or spindle, get you a chisel. But don't hold that in your hand. Hold it in a pair of vice grips <laughs> and wear a pair of gloves. I've got gloves. I just didn't put them on today. And there's different kind of flowers and stuff you get. Some people use bolt cutters. I kind of like flowers. I've been too hard on that, and it's got a little gap in the middle. I've had them for years. But anyway, I just thought I'd make a video on that fence today. I've got some other videos in the work. We ain't made one while. My camera lady's been out of pocket. Yes, I have. I've been waiting on some <laughs> gaskets and stuff I ordered. I'm going to have to do some other stuff, but... And I went to sale again yesterday. <laughs> and it poured down rain, you know, and most people got in their cars and left. You mean the smart people? <laughs> yeah. But fools like me says, man, less people here, I'll be able to buy me some goodies. <laughs> so I stayed there. And I didn't take an umbrella. My wife said, you going to take an umbrella? I said, no. Nah. She said, you're going to get wet. I said, that's okay. So I didn't take an umbrella with me. And me and a buddy of mine, we stood there, and he, he's into fishing poles and lures and stuff. Of course, I don't bid him up on that kind of stuff. And he don't bid me up on the kind of stuff I buy, but we're friends. <laughs> and I bought a pile of wrenches for $3. And there was a couple things in there, and they was rusty. They're still rusty. And I got this one right here, and it's a Kleinen Sons, and it's a number... 3146 and what that is is an antique about a hundred years old telephone lineman's wrench cool. they use this to put them <laughs> spindles gonna, that they hung have them to hold it still <laughs> well they use this to put them spindles they hold them well, glass we insulators that. onto the poles and <laughs> oh but it's got four different sizes on it and everything, I, I thought that's pretty cool. <laughs> Debbie likes that kind of stuff. She takes and drives nails in the wall in the utility room and hangs on the utility room wall. And yeah. then this one right yeah, here. Yeah, I can get a hand to put it down, that gum. Now i got to find the dead gum thing. There we got it. Why do they move when I try to get a video of them? And this <laughs> one right here is six point. You don't see that very often, real old wrenches. Mm -hmm. And it says M-8-17017. 
Mm-hmm. And thanks to the miracle of the internet, it didn't take this old man very long. It's I a, found it's out. It's a door that, handle. This is a, yeah, it'd make a door handle. <laughs> it sure would, Debbie. <laughs> but it's not a door handle. It's a Massey Harris wrench. I didn't know Massey Harris made wrenches, but it's a Massey Harris wrench. Mm-hmm. And come, I guess if you bought a new Massey Harris tractor way back in the day, you got a tool kit with it, and this was part of the tool kit, from what well, I understand. Well, cool. There's some more wrenches in that deal and a bunch more of them auction bargains. I had this truck piled up high. <laughs> but that's for another video. This was just a teaser with these two wrenches. So <laughs> we'll say goodbye and good luck to y'all. And hope you enjoy the video. If you got any questions or anything about reasons and the procedure on this fence and stuff, you can go ahead and put them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them to your satisfaction. Good luck, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, and and like and subscribe. Bye.